Every fall in my native Canada, red poppies begin to appear on lapels of coats in advance of Remembrance Day, November the 11th, when many countries around the world memorialize their fallen soldiers. The tradition of affixing flowers to clothing as a symbol of this day was established thanks to a poem by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, a Canadian physician who was serving as a soldier in the First World War. McRae lost many friends on the battlefields of Europe, particularly in a region of Belgium known as Flanders Fields. When he returned to those fields, he discovered vast numbers of poppies that had sprouted up in the area, blanketing the fresh graves. The poem that he wrote concludes with the voices of those interred in the fields speaking to us. It reads, take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. For those of us who gave our lives for the cause of victory, the dead are saying, everyone else must soldier on. They bid us to keep going, to finish the work they began. On Tubishvat today, of course, I'm thinking about how we attribute deeper, sometimes darker meanings to vegetation. Though from a halachic perspective, Tubishvat stands as the start of the fiscal year for the mitzvah of tithing fruit trees, it can also serve as a time to reflect on the symbolism we find within the natural order that can speak to us in our excruciating moment. There's ample precedent for this in our tradition. Consider that just before our hour of redemption from Mitzrayim, the Torah commands the daubing of blood from the Korban Pesach onto the lintel and the doorposts of every Jewish home in Mitzrayim. And it does it through a detailed procedure for how to accomplish this. The Torah says, Ulekachtem agudat ezov utvaltem badam asher basaf. Take a bundle of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the vessel, and then vigatem lamashkof ve'ostem zuzot min adam asher basaf, and then daub it onto the lintel and two doorposts from the blood in the vessel. Why does the Torah include the specific type of brush that we need to use for dipping and then painting? Like the burning bramble, the sneh bo'er ba'esh, that Moshe Rabbeinu encountered in the wilderness. It seems that the shrub known as the Ezov similarly conveys a message. As Chazal explained in Shemot Rabbah, And you shall take a bundle of hyssop, meaning I will make you a bundle for myself, Hashem says. Even though, even though you are lowly like hyssop, Shinamar, as the Torah declares further along, and you will be for me a treasure from among all of the nations. Despite enduring suffering lasting centuries, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, wants us to know that He sees us in our lowly state. A battered nation needs words and symbolic acts of encouragement as part of the process of Geula, of redemption. He will lift us up as we lift up the bundle of hyssop, and we dip it and lift it. And I'm thinking about the meaning of plants now, today, this year's Tu Bishvat, Tafshin Pei Dalet, because of someone named Ophir Libstein, Hashem Yikom Damo, he was the mayor of the Negev Regional Council. He was murdered on the 7th of October on Simple Torah in Kfar Aza. On one of the RCA uh, Ritz World Mizrahi Rabbinic Missions, the one I was privileged to attend, uh, his brother Doron spoke to us in Kfar Aza about how Ophir fought off the terrorists before he himself fell in battle. He lost so many members of members of their family that day, including Ophir. When Miriam Peretz eulogized Ophir Libstein, she called him the man who represents a panim hayafot shel Yisrael, the most beautiful face of Israel. Aside from hosting Palestinians from Gaza weekly in his home, Libstein was in the middle of building an industrial park that could accommodate 10,000 Gazans who would have been employed there. In addition to all of this, Ophir organized an annual festival to encourage people from all over Medinat Israel to come to see the Chag HaKalaniyot at this time of the year, a time when many red anemones cover the land of Israel in the northern Negev in proximity to Otef Aza, to the Gaza envelope. The name of the festival, like the red anemones that look just like red poppies, is Darom Adom, Red South. This year, a deeper, darker meaning to the red anemones, like the name of the festival. You know, Rashi in Masach Psachim Daf Lamed Hay, when the Gemara refers to a certain wild grain that is found, the Gemara says, Rav Papa says, Shainza de Mishtakha Beine Kalanita, 
The Rashi there says that Kalanita refers to Pereg, Poppy. To Poppy. Darom Adom. So the Medrash continues, Mara Akarosh Baruch Lahagin Alein Bedam. Why did Akarosh Baruch see fit that Jewish people should be protected, as it were, uh, through blood? And the Medrash answers, Kedi Lizkor Lahem Dam Milat Avraham. The Klai so should remember the Brit Milah of Avraham Avinu. We Shnei Damim Nitzoli Yisomim Mitzrayim. And the Klai so was saved from Mitzrayim because, unfortunately, of blood. But that blood was the blood instead of death. It was the blood of Dam Pesach and Dam Mila. And that's where Sefer Yechezkel, the Navi, relaying the Dvar Hashem, has those words, I saw you wallowing in your blood, the blood of sacrifice, of death, the blood of fallen soldiers and those who die at the hands of merciless and cruel terrorists. Exactly as we say, at a brit milah, exactly as we say in the Leil HaSeder, and I say to you, says Hashem, bedamaich in your blood, chayi, and repeated twice, one for the Dam Pesach, one for the Dam Mila. Sadly, this year, more than other years, we are not strangers to this reality. And yet there's a charge, and the charge is, chayi, live. And then the Torah says, vigatam lamashkov, you place it up on the lintel. Bishut Avraham says the Madrash. It's in the merit of Avraham. The two doorposts for Yitzchak and Yaakov. Why? To remind us that there are those who have walked through this blood-soaked doorway before us, and now we walk through it. First, we recall it's zhut. and we look at it and we see it above us and on either side, and we recall that eventually we walk through that doorway. To the Geula. The Pasuk in Yechezkel, right after the words of the charge of Omar Lach Chayi, are also about the fields. Hashem says, Someday I will make you like the wild grasses of the field. He writes on that we should be Zochim to see the time when. As the Sifrei Kodesh described, those who are buried in Eretz Yisrael are sometimes referred to the act of burial in Eretz Yisrael, sometimes called an act of zriah, of planting. Because it plants us deeper and deeper in our connection with Eretz HaKodesh, but it also reminds us that from the zricha, eventually, eventually there'll be a chanita. Eventually there'll be a new bud that will form. And that people who we have loved, who have left the world, will rise again at the time of the Biyat Goal Tzedek, and then following that at the time of Triat HaMeitim. So this year, like the Agudat Ezov, we are dipping our greenery into a vessel, a saf, that is filled with blood. But eventually, we remember that like the red anemones and like the red poppies, Klal Yisrael are also perennials. Be'ezrat Hashem, we should be zochim soon to see a great moment of Yeshua, and from there to the Gula Hashlem of Hamitit, and from there to the moment of Triad Hametim, Bimher Bimenu, Amen Bimenu.